We're going to start off with this side, going all the way down, and then we're going to do the second side of the snake house. This might be a two-part video because, like I said, I have roughly around 70 snakes, lots of mouths to feed. Come on. Oh, 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 you're striking all over the place. Come on. You got it. Look at that. It's such a beautiful snake. Come on. Oh, what a bite. Look at her. That was a great example of a snake going through shit. Look how blue her eyes are. She can just barely see. Her striking on that head right there was only possible to use that Jacobson's organ, that forked tongue, helping her figure out exactly where that rat was. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm currently hanging out inside the Everglades Outpost Snake House. This is where I keep all my reptiles right now on display for the public and today's Monday which means it's feeding day for a lot of my snakes. Now a big question that you guys always ask is how much does it cost to feed this big of a collection? I have roughly around 70 snakes alone not including turtles, crocodilians, and lizards. Just for the rats and chicks it costs roughly $550 a month to $600 a month. It depends on where the rat economy is at because depending on where you get your, your rats uh, how much of a supply they have currently, the price will change. So rats are a little bit pricey because they're good protein for your snakes. And obviously, if you look down here, we have to feed a lot of snakes in the snake house. So we got medium rats, we got small rats, we got big rats, we got rat pinkies, we got mouse fuzzies, all different sizes, all different foods for the different snakes that we have to feed. We're going to start off with this side, going all the way down, and then we're going to do the second side of the snake house. This might be a two-part video because, like I said, I have roughly around 70 snakes, lots of mouths to feed, lots of animals to maintain and keep on top of. So what we're going to do first is feed my beautiful Colette snake, a snake only found, a snake only found in Queensland, Australia. So they are endemic species only found in Australia, nowhere else on the planet. This snake is about two years old. He's hiding right in there inside that hive. And he has an amazing feeding response. This snake is pretty laid back, but the second it smells rodent, he becomes quite dangerous. Let's see. You in there? Come on. Whoa, whoa! You didn't even get a chance to see that happen. He shoots out so fast that if that rat was alive, it had no chance because their venom is one of the most potent on the planet. They are part of the Elapidae family. So that means mambas, cobras, coral snakes, and obviously all the Australian elapids. Some of the most potent venoms on the planet. This guy had the capability to take away your sense of smell and taste permanently for the rest of your life or up to five years. So the Sudecus family, which is where the Colette snake comes from, they're a very potent family, a very deadly family. I'm gonna close this up and you guys will be able to check him out chewing down on that food. He's such a beautiful snake. Check out his red scales. Next, we're going to be feeding my green anacondas, one of my favorite snakes. Look right here, we got their two babies just hanging out, two females. They're roughly a year and a half old right now. Let's see, they only eat chicks right now, so I got these nice and warm chicks. A good meal. You ready? You ready? Come on. Come on. Come on. Ooh, ooh, perfect. They are so cute the way they just wrap around. Just imagine this snake, probably 80 times bigger. Oh, let go. Don't wrap around your sibling. We're gonna have to get a chick for you too. Come here. We're gonna put her in the back so she has her privacy. We gotta feed this one right here. Let's get that chick ready. You ready? Huh? You ready? Come on. You're such a sweet little thing. Look at that cute little face. Come on. Notice how tiny those eyes are and they are perfectly placed at the top of the head, kind of like a frog. Because they're an aquatic predator, they need to ambush their prey. So you can have an 18 foot green anaconda right in front of you in the water and it's not exposing anything but the tips. Oh! The very, very top of that head exposing those eyes. Look at that. Perfect wraparound. Such a beautiful snake. We don't want to bother her too much while she eats, so we'll just put her right there in the water, which will help with eating the food, making that prey item nice and wet, easy to go down. So let me just close this up, and you guys can check them out chewing that food. Locked and secured, we are good to go. Next, we're not going to be doing the Waggler's Pit Fight. We're actually going to skip this one. 
because this snake actually needs to eat a live prey item. We have live uh, mice right now, but we don't film live feedings here on the YouTube channel. YouTube's a bit sensitive for that kind of stuff. And also, I don't like putting in people's faces. Not everyone wants to see something like that. So if you guys want to see uh, exclusive content, go to our Patreon and you can see live feedings. We're going to have to do live feeding with the Waggler's Pit Viper and the Russell's Vipers that we've got from Pakistan. So we're going to be moving on to the Bushmasters. I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're going to feed the female Bushmaster. I'm going to slowly open this. I'm actually going to use this to bring it down. She already can pick up that scent, and she's flicking her tongue out. Watch, she's so excited for food. Watch. Come on. Ooh, perfect. Look at that. Right over the back. Perfect bite. She's a little beast. Lachesis muda, the largest of all the Bushmasters and the largest fiber species on the planet. This snake can get to be 10, 12 feet long. Alright guys, it looks like she's looking around. She took her fangs out, got her mouth readjusted, and she's going to start working out at that head. Usually, uh, she doesn't really care. Sometimes she folds it up like a taco, sometimes she eats it from the rump up. But hopefully she goes head first. It makes it easier for herself. Alright guys, we're going to put this rat inside the enclosure right next to her. So she can start eating it. And also we can move on because like I said, we've got lots of snakes to feed today. We'll get some shots of her eating in a second. We're going to move on to the male right over here. Alright guys, you see the Bushmaster right there? This is the male. He's just as crazy when it comes to feeding. All Bushmasters are just great eaters. Watch this. Boom, perfect. Right over the back, into the body. He's a little beast. All right, guys, I'm gonna close this one as well because we gotta move on. We'll show you guys some more shots once we get the feeding on camera. Now, we're gonna be feeding the flat-nosed pit vipers from Java, Indonesia. We can get all those rats right up there. So we've got these custom tops now, which keep anyone from actually opening up the doors. We've got the locks and the tops, so nobody can touch the vent, get tagged by a venomous snake. We don't want that, because obviously we have the public coming here, interacting with the wildlife. So let me just get this unlocked. All right, guys, we're going to be feeding three snakes in here. We've got the two males actually hanging out right up there, and we got a big female down in here. Let me open this up. We're gonna feed that female first because she's right there, she's real close. All right guys, we're gonna use a chick to feed this flat nose pit fiber. This female is actually right here. Let's see, I'll push this stuff apart. Let's see if she'll take a bite. Oh, come on, come on, you're missing, you're missing, come on. <laughs> there we go. She is a little bit all over the place, but there she is, that's the big female in this enclosure. Flat nose pit viper, native to Java, Indonesia. And then we got our two males up here. They're picking up the scent, so they're getting real hyped up. All right, guys, we're going to close up this enclosure. It turns out the two younger males don't want to eat right now, so we're not going to keep trying to get them to eat. We'll try a different food source and do it later. Not and secure. Very good, very good. Next, we're going to be feeding one of our eyelash vipers. We're only going to be feeding one because the yellow one right up here, this one eats little mouse fuzzies, eats little pinkies. But sadly, the two Christmas phase vipers we have in here, the two eyelash vipers right there, and oh, right here. These two guys are only eating a knoll lizard. So they've actually already eaten the anoles that are crawling around the enclosure. It's this little guy right here that we're gonna be giving a little pinky. All right guys, we got a little rat pinky right there. We're gonna be giving it to the eyelash viper. Ready for a little? Oh, perfect. He's such a little beast. I got this eyelash viper when it was much smaller. It's definitely grown a lot over the past eight months or so. A little beast eating all the time. Now these eyelash vipers specifically are from the Mosquito Coast, Nicaragua. And you can find them throughout Central America. And in the past, you guys have seen us go out to Costa Rica and find a plethora of different colors because the eyelash viper is what's called polymorphic. So every time they have a little batch of babies, all the babies can be all kinds of different colors. All right guys, we're gonna let this little eyelash viper finish up with that food. Lock this up. And like I was saying a moment ago, these custom tops are great because they keep people from touching the top of the screen, which potentially they can get envenomated because a snake fan could easily get through the first layer of mesh. There are people who have been envenomated just putting their hands on top of enclosures and not thinking about the fangs getting through. So it is a potential danger. That's why we got these custom tops. We got our locks. We follow every precaution necessary to keep everyone safe. Because it's cool to come see snakes, but you want to come do it safely. 
Now, uh, let's see, we got more rats. We're gonna go over here now and check out the variable bush vipers. Now, variable bush vipers are from Africa, and they're called variable bush vipers because they come in such a variety of colors. Just like the eyelash vipers, you can find an amazing. Were you just looking at the cones? Yeah. Oh, they're my cones! All right, so our female is right here hiding in the bush. We got our male up top. There we go. Let's see. Hey, buddy. What are you doing, guy? Wakey, wakey. Come on. I'm gonna go from this side. Want some food, buddy? Huh? Oh! <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna let you have that. That's the young male. He's doing real good. The father of all these cute little babies we produced recently. I'm gonna get out a little rat pin for this female. Let's see, where is she at? She's right here in the bush. Gotta be real careful you see her. She's right there. Let's give her a little bit of food. You ready? Come on. Come on. You got it. Oh! Oh! I'm so sorry, guys. You must have not seen that. Look, you got the female right there in between the bush, chewing down. That female just dragged her food into the back. If you look right there, you can see she's just chewing down on the first end. That's a really good meal for her. She's going to need it because remember, she produced all these little babies right here. You can see them in that container. We'll just throw a shot in there because we don't want to reach in there right now. Uh, and we got our male right here. He's just chewing down. I guess he's waiting for the right moment just to start slurping down that rodent. We're going to close up the glass because we have plenty more to move on to. So we get this locked up and secured because this is a snake you don't want to get bit by. There's no anti-venom for variable bush vipers. If you get bit and it's a real bad bite, you just need new blood basically. Get hooked up to a dialysis machine, get your blood cleaned out. Not fun, not fun at all. Now next, we're gonna be dealing with my favorite species of rattlesnake, the Uricone rattlesnake. Awesome animal, only found in Venezuela. And what's really cool about this guy is that he looks like cookies and cream. Let's see, this snake is a great eater, always hungry. Let me get my rat ready. We're gonna open this up. And you can see right in the back, that's where the Uricone is. Let's see how he's acting today. Hey. Hey. Are you sleeping? Huh? Cookies and cream, hello. Oh, here we go. He's waking up now. Come on. Oh, 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 you're striking all over the place. Come on. You got it. Come on. Look at that guy. He's such a beautiful snake. Come on. Oh, what a bite. All right, we're going to leave that rat pup right there. And momentarily, we're going to see that snake consuming that food. You would not want to take a tag off of any Crotalidae member, meaning rattlesnakes in general. These guys have nasty, nasty venoms. You do not want to take it off that snake. I'm going to pull this back so it's nice and secure. And when he starts to eat all that food, we'll get some cool shots so you guys can see. Uricone rattlesnake, my favorite species on the planet that comes to rattlers. Second being the eastern downback rattlesnake, which is one of the next snakes we're about to feed. Notice how the Uricone rattlesnake uses its forked tongue to figure out what direction he's got to find that food. Although they've got great eyesight, that forked tongue is a huge part of snakes and lizards finding their food, especially snakes. So when something like a rattlesnake bites down on its food, lets go, lets it run away and die from the venom, it's got to track that food. So it uses that forked tongue to figure out what direction that food's found in. So they put that forked tongue out, and whichever side of the forked tongue picks up the most scent particles, they're going to head in that direction. And that is going to help this guy track down his meal. Alright guys, next we're going to be feeding my second favorite rattlesnake on the planet and also the largest rattlesnake on the planet, the Eastern Diamondback Rattler. Now, this is my big female. She's right in her hide right now, so it's pretty dark in there. But you'll see she'll strike out like crazy for this rat. Come on. Come on. Oh! Perfect! And she'll start to consume that in a couple moments when she feels nice and comfy. And we'll close that right up. Alright, 
Now we're going to be moving on, actually, not to a snake, but a turtle. Damn, you want some food? Huh? You want some food? Oh, you little, my little nibble. Oh, he, he's definitely hungry. That's Thanos, my snapping turtle. I've had him for quite some time now. He's a little beast. He loves to eat basically anything that goes in there. And if you're not careful, your finger. So let me get uh, a little rat pink, some nice protein right there. He's gonna come for you. Ready? Where you at, dude? Where'd you go? There he is. Come on, come to the side. Come on. Go around, go around the log. What are you doing? Come on. All right, maybe he'll be a little more encouraged if the rat is actually inside the enclosure. Come on, come on. You can do it, get a little exercise. Come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, perfect. He is such a little beast, look at him. And he's just gonna disappear. He is such a little beast of a snapping turtle. When I got him, he was the size of probably like a quarter, really tiny. And now he's gone pretty big. All right, so I'm gonna lock this up. We're good to go. Next, we're gonna be feeding. Let's see, we're gonna move on over here. We will be feeding the cobras inside this rack. You guys know how exciting those snakes are to feed. But next, we're gonna be with the Arizona Black, Puff Hatters, and of course, the Pygmy Mall that also knows the King Browner, Miniature King Browner, Dwarf King Browner, or Pygmy King Browner, or a, a small brown snake. All right, awesome. We're gonna feed the little Arizona Black Rattler. This is a really cool snake, and this actually came from a biologist that you guys are gonna be seeing in a future episode. So that's really exciting stuff. We're gonna be teaming up with some biologists in the future, doing lots of interesting work. So we'll definitely show you where this guy came from. All right, so let me make sure my rat's nice and dry before we feed them off. All right, guys, we're gonna be feeding the Arizona Black. Let's see if Crotalis Cerberus would like, oh, nice tag right there, perfect. He is definitely hungry. We're gonna leave that right there. We're gonna close that glass up so it's nice and safe. Oh, don't be upset. That's a really cool rattlesnake. It literally has almost like a purple hue on the side of his body. But he figures out that that thing's dead. We're gonna move on to the oh so excitable puff adders. They love to just strike out like crazy, so let's be real careful with these guys. You ready? Beautiful pink puff adder. Ooh, nice bite. This species found in Africa, it's also related to the Gaboon Vipers. They're in the same family, it's called Bittus. Bittus is all those short, fat-bodied snakes. Puff adders, Ethiopian mountain vipers, all types of different species. Let's get this thing out of here. Oh, oh nice try. Let's try. Oh, there we go. Right over that spicy meatball. I'm gonna turn that one into another spicy meatball as well. Let me close this up just in case they decide to let go of those prey items. Now let me lock this up. We're gonna feed the pygmy mulga, one of my favorite snakes. Only comes from Australia. Uh, there's actually uh, pygmy mulga, mulga that's found in Papua New Guinea as well. Uh, but this it would be from Manland. All right, he's in the back. I always gotta check where he's at because this snake is very explosive and you don't wanna make a mistake around it. So let's move everything to the side. I'm gonna open up the glass and see if we can get the snake to come up for some food. Want some food? Woo, woo, woo. You ready? You want it? <laughs> now you're scared? He's all crazy when he comes out of the enclosure, but once he's out, he's like, oh, I don't know about being here. I'm kind of spooky. Come on. Come out of there. I know you're hungry. Oh, now he's over the way in the back. He uses his escape route. Come on. Where are you at? Don't be scared. He goes from so freaking food aggressive to not wanting anything at all. All right, well, I'll just put the rat right here on top of that rock because this snake does not want to eat. At least in front of us. He's super explosive out of the enclosure. Like, get me, get me, get me! And then once he's outside the enclosure, he goes. I don't want to be here. I'm going to go home. So we're going to have to let him be. If we can get a shot of him eating that food, that would be awesome. Uh, my Eastern Dimeback is just finishing up that rat. The puff adders just finished their meals. And this little guy is just figuring out what side of the food or what side of that rat he wants to start with. He keeps grabbing by the head and letting go. So he just needs a couple more moments to figure everything out. While he's figuring that out, we're going to be feeding all the snakes inside this snake rat. Big Bertha, Indian Cobra, Indian Cobra, Indian Cobra, and then we got our South American rattlesnake, so let's get to it. Lock, lock, we are good to go. We got our rat right out here drying so the aspen doesn't stick on them too much. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with Big Bertha, so let me get her that nice sized rat. She's my monocle cobra that I've had the longest out of all my Venice reptiles. And she's got some good size to her. Oh, she's going through shed. 
Uh, she might still eat. If she's willing to take the food, I'll give it her. But if she doesn't eat, it's going to be because it's going to be because of that bluish hue she's got over her eyes right now. She's not able to see it. Oh yeah, she still wants to eat. She doesn't care. Look at her. That was a great example of a snake going through shed. Look how blue her eyes are. She can just barely see. Her striking on that head right there was only possible to use that Jacobson's organ, that forked tongue, helping her figure out exactly where that rat was. We're gonna let her be, so she has some privacy. Plus, we have lots more snakes to feed. We got these Indian cobras, which as you guys know, can be pretty hectic snakes. So let me get this one ready. This is a female. Last time she came out, she bit the bin, so we'll see what happens this time. Hey, sweetie. When she picks up the scent of the rat, she'll change her demeanor real quick. Come on. Do you smell her? Come on, let's see. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh! Oh, don't bite the water bowl. Come on. Perfect. Look at that. Real aggressive feeder. All right, we're going to let her be. Close that up. Perfect. We're going to move on to one of the males. These males are ballistic. They will shoot out defensively and nearly land on the floor. So let's see, is this one still going through shit? This one looks good to go. Gonna offer it a nice sized rat. Come on. Uh-uh, uh-uh, look over here. Yummy rat, yummy rat, no need to fly out. Need him to see that rat, give it a sec. It's still flying out at me, come on. Don't be crazy, don't go nowhere, come on. Look at rat, delicious. That's for you. That's for you. Hey, hey. Don't go in there. Don't. Okay. Come here. Don't go in there. Not you snake. Uh-uh. Don't give me that. Oh! As you can see, when snakes are upset, they musk in defense. We just made custard all over my hand. And that's a great deterrent if I was a predator. I wouldn't want to eat them now. Not that I was going to eat you, buddy. Oh, I know, I know. I'll leave that rat in the tub for him. He's a little too defensive right now and I want to eat. Oh, you really gave me that cheese, buddy. Right back inside that bed. Come on. I hear you. I know you're upset. All right, what we'll do is take that rat and just put it in there for him to eat. He'll figure it out later. He's just so defensive right now. He doesn't even want to try it. Oh my goodness, what a, oh, what a stinky situation. Okay, let's get back to it. Now, let me see, we're gonna move on to this male right here. It's the last of the Indian males. Oh, and while we're dealing with the Indians, the Arizona black rattlesnake is finishing its food. No worries, as long as he's eating, that's what matters. And you can see he's just finishing. He's only got the rump sticking out. That is such a beautiful snake. Look at that gold speckling right on top. Such a beautiful animal. So, we got some good sized rats right here. Let's grab this one. Gonna hopefully get this male to eat without being too crazy. Hey, buddy. You want the rat? Rats are tasty. Come on, I know you smell it. Oh, okay. Want it? Nope, that's not where the rat is. Come on, Indian Cobra. Nope, come on. You're a little crazy, huh? Okay, okay. Let me get you into your tub. You want that rat? No? You're just gonna fly everywhere like a maniac? Okay, so we don't wanna have him fly out of Okay, we're just having him fly out again. You sneaky snake. Hey, you, come here. You little punk. Causing all kinds of problems for me today, huh? These Indian cobras are just hectic snakes. Very defensive, you know. Oh, you can eat that rat now? Don't tell me you're gonna eat the rat now. Look at this. You can eat the rat right now. No, he's not. Okay. We'll let him be, we want him flying out again. Whew. Let's move on to some calmer snakes. We got some South American rattlesnakes right here. They usually are not too hectic. I'll open that up while I get these little rat tanks prepared. We got the female right here, and I got my striped male right here. You can see him hiding right there. Beautiful snakes. Hey, little lady. You want some? There we go, perfect. Beautiful South American rattlesnakes. We're gonna get this bigger one, bigger rat up to the male in here. Come on. Come on. You in there? Come on. No. Oh, were you trying? He was trying to strike and he missed. Come on. Come on. 
Oh, did you see that? Got bit right in the head. We're gonna leave that rat pup right there. And they'll be good to go. Let's close this up. The rack of spiciness, very nice. Okay. Can't wait to get all these snakes into their own vision cages. And then once we come down to this end, we've got our king cobras. We got Justina, we got Kevin. They're not gonna be eating because they just recently ate a python about a week ago. And they don't eat as consistently as the smaller snakes, so they space out those meals. We're gonna have to end it here on this episode, but we're gonna do a part two for this feeding episode. So just check that out. That's gonna be coming up pretty soon. Check us out on Patreon to get exclusive content because obviously we're not gonna be feeding live uh, mice on the channel. We don't want to show that to you guys. We're only gonna put it on the Patreon because, like I said, it's not for everyone, and also YouTube doesn't like stuff like that. So if you want to see live feedings like with a Russell's Viper or a Waggler's Pit Viper, then check that out on the Patreon. Get your own merchandise on Teespring. We oh, that's not my T-shirt. This is McCarthy's, but it's pretty cool too. Look at that East. Eastern Dime Back Rattlesnake, right? check out McCarthy's Wildlife, but also check out Teespring for Chandler's Wildlife merch, because we got All Hail the King, we got Allison Don't Play No Sh and we got Big Chill Life Ziggy. Ooh, I love you Ziggy. Oh, where'd you go? Oh, no, I was going to come back. Oh. Anyways, guys, I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, but most of all, st <coughs> stay gangster.